Hello, we're now going to talk about observers and the motivation here uh, comes from state feedback. So last time we saw that through this state feedback control law we were able to manipulate properties of the open loop system. In particular we were able to place all of the closed loop poles wherever we wanted. So no matter what the open loop system was through designing our state feedback we could place the poles of the closed loop into arbitrary locations. Now this came with a, a catch um, in that state feedback assumes that uh, we can measure the system state, which you can't in practice. Um, and this is what uh, the role of an observer is in all of this. So we cannot measure the system state. So what we're going to do is design an observer to estimate the system state. And then rather than applying our state feedback to the true state, which we can't measure, we're instead going to apply it based on our estimate of the state uh, instead. And we'll talk about that a little bit uh, in the next lecture. Um, now we're just going to talk about observer design. Um, so state feedback assumes we can measure the state. We can't. Um, so let's try to estimate it with an observer. So what's going on? Well, we have some state space model. X dot is equal to AX plus BU. Y is equal to CX. And we can measure this. So we can measure Y. And we want to estimate this. So we want this because then we can apply state feedback and we can place our closed loop poles so that they're nice and stable or something like that. And um, we talk more about uh, where you should place the, the poles in um, this sort of bonus video that I was talking about last time. So here we have our state space model. This is what we can measure. This is what we want to do. And our state observer is also a feedback system that tries to update its estimate of the state based on the measurements that it takes. And the way it does this is as follows. So we introduce a new variable. This variable is internal to the observer. So this is part of our control system. And we're going to call it x hat. And this is our state estimate. Um, let's just write in a little bit more. So and what the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build a copy of our system. So this isn't the true system. This is, well, a copy. And it also corresponds to what we think our system is. So we've talked before about how models are only approximations of reality. So A, B, and C, these are really our model. Um, this is what we think our system is. They're not the actual system. Um, so the, the observer is based on our model of the system. Um, so we've got x hat dot is equal to ax hat um, plus b u. And this is our state estimate. And, and this would be a potential uh, state estimator. We've got a copy of what we think our model is. Maybe we assume our initial conditions are 0. We know what our control input u is, and if our observer or if our model was 100% correct, well, then we would be fine. Whatever input we apply to our actual system, um, any change in our state would correspond to exactly what we would get in our observer, and so we x hat would be exactly equal to x. Of course, this is never going to happen in reality. So in reality, the real model is not a state space model at all. It's something more complicated and it's nonlinear and certainly higher order than whatever simplified model you're using. So if we do this in practice, it will be a disaster. Um, and so what we do is we add in a correction term. And I believe I'm not... Yeah, no, I think that's... All right, um, so here we have a matrix L that we're going to design. And this is, will have been called K in the basic course. So apologies, this is, I'm using world convention rather than Lund convention. 
So this is our observer matrix. Um, and what's this, what signal is this going to act on? It's going to act on y minus c x hat. So what are the various pieces here? Well, y, this is our measurement. So this is what we get from our real system. And c x hat, this is what we think the output should be. So based on our estimate of the state, this is what the output would be based on that estimate. So what we do is we compare what our real output is to what we think it should be based on our state estimate, and we include this in our observer. And the idea is that if we do this, so if we design this matrix L in a clever way, we'll be able to drive this error uh, to zero. Or ideally, we'll be able to drive the difference between. So driving this to zero would correspond to making the outputs of our observer and our um, true model match. <laughs> our, our observer and the real process match up. Um, we hope for something a bit stronger. Um, actually, what we're hoping for is not really realistic. Um, but it's, well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll just carry on and I'll, I'll say more when we get there. So we would love this to go to zero, but even better, we would really like the difference, if I just say x tilde, this is equal to x minus x hat. We would really like this to go to zero, um, because then that would mean that the true state would become equal to our estimate of the state, and we would be good to go. Um, there's kind of a whole host of reasons why this won't work in practice. Well, in, in practice, probably the, the true system has... Maybe you can argue about whether a true system actually really has a state or not. But if you did, you would probably be forced to concede that its state would be infinite dimensional or, or something um, in reality, whatever that means. So. I mean, the point here is that if you're using a simplified model, the state of your simplified model is probably much smaller than, of much lower dimension than whatever the state in your true system will be. So it's a little bit bogus to say things like that. But nevertheless, it's kind of a reasonable approximation. I mean, it means at least under the assumption that our model is somewhat valid, the thing that we think, the value that we think our state takes corresponds to what the state would be in the real model under various simplifying assumptions. Um, so it's a little bit, the whole thing's a little bit weird um, when you stop and think about it, but uh, nevertheless it is very useful still. So th this notion of a state still is a very powerful concept, so it is wor something worth trying to estimate um, whether or not you believe the state is the state of a system is something real or not. I mean, of, often the things that you use as states in state space models do correspond to physical quantities. So maybe like charges on capacitors or velocities of various components in a mechanism. So the real state does have a a, a real meaning, um, and you might not be able to measure it, but at least now we can estimate something that does have a real meaning. But Anyway, we could sort of go on this tangent for some time, I think. But anyway, uh, this is what we would. This is the property that we would like our observer to have. We would like it uh, to be the case that our state estimate matches the state of the actual system. Um, so, will we achieve that this goes to zero? Well, we've got. A bunch of equations, let's just sort of substitute everything in and see what happens. Well, if x tilde is equal to x minus x hat, then the rate of change of x tilde, so this is how our error between the true state and our state estimate changes over time. Well, this is just equal to x dot minus x hat dot, but x dot is equal to a x plus b u. And x hat dot is equal to my, yeah, well, a x hat minus b u. And then here we have a minus l, and then y minus c x hat. So we just substituted things in so far. And now let's 
massage this a little bit. So X and X hat, these are different, but we, we do know what our control input is. So we've got no issues cancelling these terms. And so what do I get? And then, well, what else do we know? We know Y. We know this is equal to CX. So that's this equation here. Um, so this is now LC X minus X hat. We've also got an X minus X hat here. So we've got actually this simplifies down to be A minus LC X minus X hat, which is just X uh, tilde. So the, the error dynamics is following this equation. And so what do we need to do to make the error 10 to 0? We need to make sure that the error equation is stable. And to do that, we just need the eigenvalues of A minus LC to lie in the left half plane. And so that's what we do with our observer. We design our matrix L so that the eigenvalues of this matrix here lie in the left half plane. Um, there's a little bit more we could say about all of this. Um, so let's suppose that we've actually got some noise um, in our measurement. So what would happen if we added this in? So now y is equal to cx plus n. So then here we would have minus l n. So it's also clear that we we should place our poles so that they lie in the left half plane so that our error tends to zero. But we also see that if we pick L to be too big, so if L's a matrix and we put huge numbers in, then any noise we have in our measurement is going to be massively amplified. So we, we've got a bit of a trade-off here. Um, so we need to pick um, we need to pick nice stable poles, but we shouldn't do it with too high an observer gain, otherwise we'll just amplify any noise we have on our sensor readings. Um, and in terms of pole placement, well, if you go away and look at um, the, the, the lecture slides, you'll see an observer canonical form, um, which was completely equivalent to our controller canonical form. and hopefully through exactly the same reasoning that we used for the um, state feedback case, you'll be able to convince yourself that through an appropriate choice of the matrix L, we can in fact place the observer poles wherever we want. Um, and that is indeed the case. So there's this duality between the state feedback problem and the pole plate and the observer problem. Um, and this is actually common throughout control. Typically where you have some problem written in terms of the state, there's a dual problem um, in terms of some kind of estimation problem. And by combining the observer problem and the state problem, you can build a, a practical solution. And we'll see the, an example of that when we combine our um, observers with our state feedback control laws in the next lecture. But well, there you have some stuff about observers.